what she does videos on because these people group up, okay? People like SGT, Pamphlet, Nemos, Lejeune, Citizens Investigative Report, Praying Medic. Um, all these scammers we've been bumping into lately, they, uh, Brandon Dilly, uh, all the other guys out there, they team up with each other and do the same content. In order to brainwash you, first, they have to get you really hooked into their deep state. Now, I'm not saying the deep state's not real. I'm just saying that they are manipulating it. They're, I mean, they manipulate the deep state. They manipulate Pizzagate along with Titus, along with Ryan, along with Jamie Big Mac, along with Lift the Fail. They get this big group of fake-ass YouTube truthers going, and you're forced to f only listen to them because they go around and try to strike down anyone that doesn't follow their lead in ripping you off. So look, mortgage companies use their own private insurance to pay your home loan another scam. Corey Brook Booker drops huge blank in Cavana committee hearing. How one man got his house free and clear by challenging his mortgage. Why would you want to get your house? Wait, why should you own a house and a property but don't pay for it? Why? Why, Lejeune? Why, Lejeune? Why do you want to whoever owns the property that you're buying from, why do you want to rip them the fuck off just to get your payments reduced and gone? Okay, this is how un-American, immoral people think about the people around them. It's all they care about, y'all. They don't want to work. They are lazy. They are very unintelligent. They can't handle doing things themselves. They have to do things like Try to put down Jack P, regardless of what you think about Jack P, um, for uh, challenging Q. And then try to tell everybody that Q bitch slaps Jack. Are you fucking kidding me? You know how many people woke up to Q being a fraud scam because of Jack? I, you, I get it. You could say that, like, you know, there's all these problems with what's going on with it. Yeah, but still, just like when people say, yeah, Q woke up a bunch of people, though. So did Jack, right? Um, modern money mechanics and Panama papers support secret bank accounts on your social security number. These are unproven. Now, when people operate with the ability to tell you facts that cannot be proven, which, by the way, makes them non-facts. They are not facts if they can't be proven. But they address them and brainwash you into thinking they're facts. That's what people like Beans, Lejeune, all the people we've named. That's what Sather does. Sather wants to tell you that you can cure cancer literally, and I'm not being mean or making fun of him, by doing coffee enemas five times a day, but Sather himself admits that he doesn't image people to see if the cancer went away. He's basically just convincing people that their cancer went away, and when these people die and they can't really tell people, hey, he ripped me off and I died, then no one knows. They go for any vulnerability in the public to manipulate it. Deep state satanic ring being exposed as more Democrats resign amidst 120,000 indictments. Now, Lejeune takes the number of indictments, which is just in the mere thousands, inflates it to, like, say they're inflating it to 30. He did 20, then 30, then 40. Now, Lejeune's taking it to 120, and I... Once all the actors are revealed as Satanists, not all actors are, but this is that witch hunt mentality. Sure, there's some Satanist actors. Sure, there's some good actors. But all of them are Satanists because you watched April Lejeune. Very evil people. They talk about how other people are evil. Well, how, well, don't you have to be an evil person to sit and talk about other human beings in the way that April Lejeune and her followers do? And this is what she does, though. She doesn't respect her followers. She brainwashes them. She gets them into this type of content that's very evil, that makes them focus on concepts that drive them crazy, like pedophilia, satanic ritual abuse, Democrats eating babies and, and drinking adrenochrome and all this stuff until that's all they think about, they dream about. They, they walk around and talk to other people about it until those, got, those people get alienated from the public or, so, or the society they live in. And then these people isolate themselves into their homes and just send out their money to people like Lejeune and Nemos and, the, uh, and Titus. Okay, This is why these people are all bad guys. These the people that you can prove the people that you could say, see, look at it. Look what they're doing here. They don't ever try to get up there and say, now, listen, 
I know we're talking about other human beings here, and I can't prove to you any of the things I'm saying, but these are my opinions. No. They get up there and tell you that they're facts. They get up there and they, they put on a big act. They're actors that are pushing opinions as facts to brainwash the living hellfire out of you. Can you just all of a sudden start doing what Lejeune's doing? How do you all of a sudden just start ripping all these people off this bad, right? You don't. You build up to it. Okay. So you've got April Lejeune, a criminal. Now, here's my deal, peeps. I've sh I have proven to you by showing you the, um, the, the released information on Twitter by the Anons that Dustin, is, his last name is not Nemos, by the way, is a violent criminal. Coincidentally, now he takes donations on YouTube to give you secret drops about how Alex Jones is a Jew and how other people are Jews. In, and if you've ever looked at his Twitter, you want to know, I know he's going to say, no, 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 I'm a genius. I'm allowed to use a swastika. But have you ever looked at him? Might not let me. He probably blocked me, I would assume. Let's just do it like this. Oh, look, I don't even have to bring it up. It's right there. Look, there it is. Have you ever went and looked at him? He he, he adds a Q and he adds a Nazi sign um, into his stuff. Of course, he's trying to pretend like help Q fight Nazis. No, he's he's one of the most closed-minded, prejudiced, racist people I've ever bumped into on the Internet. All these people team up and they find weak-minded, sheeple individuals. They make them feel special by making them feel like they're woke, making them feel like all these secret things are happening, and then they extort them for money. Wow. These people are twisted, dude. They're, you, you have to wonder, when you go to Twitter and you see these types of people, these YouTubers and Twitter accounts, when you see them inciting ju social justice mobs, not caring how bad it is for the country, not caring how bad it is for their side of government, they're not really right wing. They're not really conservatives. They're playing a role. OK, they're everything they fucking tell you from the fact that all of them say they are genius or polymath. So polymath is a person that's a genius at many things. All of them tell you that they are privy to special secret information from several different methods. All of them have a scam to get your money, whether they're dangling a baby in front of your face, whether they are, you know, guilt tripping you because they got censored for insulting some people under the age of 18, which blatantly does violate YouTube's uh, terms of service for them to insult kids, um, which they were doing. I remember I was watching the video and I was saying to people in my Discord and Rachel, I'm saying, this is going. This video is going to be censored. This whole channel is going to get deleted. You can't sit and talk this way about a kid that just went through a tragedy. YouTube will delete them just for that purpose alone. Of course, now I watched Two of them get deleted and went to their Twitter accounts and saw them with my own eyes saying, we were so close to the truth that we got deleted. I even left them a comment and said, dude, YouTube's going to delete you for talking this way about anyone under the age of 18 on your show. Just wait, dude. They're fucking going to search for this shit. They're going to find it and they're going to delete your ass. YouTube's going to get you. Because I was trying to tell them, delete the damn video, but the viral. So he didn't want to delete it. He's like, oh, no, I'm gaining subs and views and money off this. Hell no, I'm not deleting it. Oh, I'm gone. It's gone. And there was a six-month campaign from the YouTuber I'm talking about going on any show that would host him saying, be guilt-tripped for me. I've got a wife. I've got a kid. I can't make money. Be guilt-tripped for me, man. You got you to gotta feel bad for me, man. Because even though it was my fault I got deleted, I'm going to lie to you and tell you that it was uh, they were censoring me because I was getting the truth out, which the truth they were getting out, I debunked in under two minutes, by the way, factually. Um, long story short, though, why do they continue this behavior? They're going to always do it, y'all. They were criminals long before they ever made YouTube channels. They were scared to make YouTube channels because they thought, holy shit, man, if I take my criminal ass to YouTube, I'm going to go to prison. But then they realized that they don't get charged for running these scams on YouTube if they do it right. The worst that's going to happen is their YouTube channel gets deleted and they make another that Nathan wasn't for QAnon. Coming to a theater near you, P. 
Pedo Wood. That's quite an intro, isn't it? He's doing that on purpose. He is blatantly trying to rub it in the faces of the people who know that Nathan said for months that he did not believe in QAnon. He thought pamphlet was Q. He's rubbing it in your faces, people. He's saying, you know, I lied. That's what he's saying. Hey, welcome back to my show. Good to see you again. I There's a March Against Pedophiles. That was the preview for it. That was the trailer for the California March Against Hollywood Pedophiles, which is going to be in Los Angeles tomorrow. Wanted to make sure to cover it. Wanted to make sure to cover it again, actually, for people who were tuned in for the last show. So we'll tell you, the last show had got deleted. So I'll explain it uh, after we talk about the... No, it didn't get deleted, Nathan. You deleted it. Okay, buddy? When you delete a video, you don't get a strike. You can't go live. If you... Get a strike and YouTube deletes your video. You can't go freaking live. Do I got to say it again? Uh, California March Against Hollywood Pedophiles. As a person who has previously attended one of the only, there aren't very many protests against pedophiles. And when they are organized, they don't go very well, typically. And they're mostly populated by members of the opposition. And They're mostly populated by people holding pitchforks because the government is trying to stop them. Really, the people that are protecting them are people that are distracting from the real issues by throwing psyops in your face for their own financial gain. FBI agents and so forth. So that's what I experienced last time. I'm actually going to show you a little bit of my experience at rallies. So I'm going to cover that. Um, All he's going to do is show you where Antifa broke his phone. And they broke his phone because they know what he is. Oh, I put QAnon in the title because there's some recent information about QAnon. And I can tell something to defend the QAnon supporters. Uh, defend the Q Defend it. Let's hear you defend Q, buddy. Um, but also tell you what I think's going on with what Jack Kosobiak said. I'll give you my theory on it. And then I think we're just going to look at Elon Musk on Joe Rogan smoking weed. And we've been talking about it. That's mostly because we've been talking about Elon Musk for a long time. This is like the most unbelievable collapse of this icon, this hero. Not going to collapse him. The, my crypto kitty. Yes, he's been pro. What I've been trying to tell you guys, he only played... The role of being against Q because he was trying to get views. He saw that I was having live streams between 800 and 1500 people a night during my debunking. Okay, I'm not like him. I won't continue a topic for the sole sake of views. So he thought he saw my big live streams like, geez, I want some of that cheddar cheese, y'all. So he came and start coming to my channel asking me to give him my debunks, then the information I found. He said, Unirock, the stuff you're finding is great, but your streams are so long, and I know you're going to be live streaming a lot. Let me take clips of it and go do shorter shows so that we can get the information out to more people without them having to skip through your 6-hour, 8-hour, 12-hour streams that are getting 800 to 2,000 concurrent viewers at a time. And I said, okay, Nathan. If you really are trying to get the word out there, not many people were trying to get the word out there about what I had discovered on Q, and I thought, awesome. He's finally got his shit together. He's being skeptical. He's trying to do the right thing. And Nathan, for like two or three fucking straight months, put on this act that he was anti-Q. Only, though, I feel, and I could say this confidently without being taken to court, if he believes in free speech, I don't think he does, I think he is like every other leftist shillbag that thinks, um, ex you know, extreme political shillbag saying, oh, no, I only believe in free speech when it doesn't harm my reputation. Um, but so anyway, he he started going back and forth like he he realized he wasn't going to get the big views like I was getting on his anti Q videos. So the minute he shifted back to doing fence sitting on it using the hashtag for Q, never saying anything against it, not really saying anything for it. I told everyone, guys, he's working for the other side. He's misrepresenting my information purposely just to try to get views and clicks so that he can get a popular show. He is just trying to uh, use things. All my subscribers defended Nathan and said, Uni, you're just pissed off at Nathan. You're just mad at him. I didn't have a reason to be mad. I had more viewers than him. 
until the Q Cappy fiasco. And that's when he started having more viewers than me because he completely sold out to the other side. Now, he'll go around dropping little things like, you know, uh, you know what I think about Q and you know what I feel about Q, making sure it's ambiguous to the max for any of his Q viewing populace because he knows his views now are populated by pitchfork waving social justice warrior Q followers that want people to just be locked up in Gitmo without a trial. Um, but watch, listen. Doshi here to produce the show on something. California March Against Hollywood Pedophiles. It's related to, I'll just tell you why I think it's, um, well, I would wonder where the video came from. I wonder who organized this rally. We'll look at it a little bit, but either way. Who do you think? Who do you think? Do you think that the Q guys, when doing everything they can to try to keep their PSYOP alive from paying you to interview Isaac Cappy and paying people all across the board, um, in subs, in views, in revenue, and in cold hard cash to do the shit they want you to do, promising you botted views, promising you sheeple views, promising that they will direct traffic towards your channel if you play ball with them. All those things factored into you becoming uh, selling out again. This is not the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth time. Meeps! Join in the Rocket Squad. Thanks, Meeps. This is not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or 25th time Nathan has flopped sides because that's what he does. He doesn't, when you sit on a fence with one of the fence poles firmly inserted up your ass, you don't have to worry about pissing off either side and losing subs. You can maximize your viewers. Now, most people that have a conscience and that are really trying to get the truth out will definitely give you facts and tell you the side they're on. I warn you before I give you my opinion. I tell you when it's my opinion. He does not. Wait, Let's um, get through this. I'll advise. Oh, anyway, let me show you. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful with information. I'll show you guys how easy it is to change Discord messages. I hate to give you any, any idea. Oh, my God. Now, he's doing it, too. He's opening this. He is a shill for QAnon, guys. He opened. He didn't open up. See, the big argument has been the QAnon guys. Q himself tried to say... They can change Discord messages, I'll prove it. But they didn't do it on an iPhone. On an iPhone, all I'm asking them to do, instead of misinforming the public, Nathan, instead of misinforming everyone and saying, you can change Discord messages easy. No, you can change them on your computer easy. An iPhone is much different. You don't have access to the developer toolkit. You can't just open it up and change the code like this. How could Microchip scroll through it like he did for everyone with this. Now, all I'm asking is you to show it. Don't show it on your fucking computer on Google Chrome loaded. You see, Nathan purposely loaded Discord in Chrome. Now, look, me and Nathan both have this program. This is the actual Discord app that you download. Why didn't Nathan change it in the app? Why didn't he change it on an iPhone? Because he's shilling, y'all. Yes. Then try to find something that you're going to edit. So... Really he's just I, playing. I, he's playing the Q video. I, I I don't want to say it's fake news, um, but I think you know there was an Israeli influence in this thing too. There re definitely was. There's he doesn't want to let it go that there's an Israeli influence. Why? Because Nathan's anti-Semitic. If you haven't seen the clues yet. If you haven't seen him encourage the anti-Semitic crowd in his chat because it gives him more views, if you haven't seen him refuse to kick people who are putting down people for other religions, but he'll definitely kick you if you say something bad about his show, then you are just closing your eyes around Mr. Lift the Damn Veil. That's why he has lost the respect of the entire truther community just so he could suck up to the short-lived Q community. Now, you wait. You wait until he begs for your forgiveness, because he will. He's done it every time. Every time. I had a problem with him, because I was trying to show him that people did die in the Vegas incident, but we couldn't put the videos up on YouTube of the people dying because we would get struck down. YouTube strikes videos with grotesque violence in it. So we couldn't show you people dying during the Vegas incident. I made Nathan change his mind by sending him video after video after video of the people that were recorded um, actually dying during the Vegas incident. Once he saw them, you can go find the video on his channel. He goes online and says, you know what? I do believe people died in Vegas. I just don't believe the, the mainstream media story. That's the same thing I said. It's just that Nathan doesn't care. 
He doesn't – look, he's all about the views, the virility. It, now, I took my opinion of him back when he tried to come to my channel, apologize, say that he wanted to walk you know, the better path and not misinform people, you know, said that he was willing to prove it and attempted to show us by taking my debunks into his channel and reporting them while sourcing me for it. He forgot to source me in like six of his videos, but I didn't complain. Um, I just wanted the information out. I wasn't trying to whore it. I wanted people to wake up to Q more than I wanted my channel to grow or to receive credit. That's why when Jack P during his, when Jack uh, Pasebic gives you the pamphlet part, so Jack's debunk is broken down into two parts. One is microchip. The other one is the pamphlet stuff. If you've listened to his uh, Jack P's debunk. Well, what did I do? I gave him everything I had. So he got microchip stuff. He got my stuff. He sourced microchip. He just didn't bother to source me for any of my stuff. So next time Jack P messages me, oh, Jack didn't message you, Uni Rock, asking for your stuff. You don't, you, you, we think you're a liar. That's what Nathan said. Hold up. Let me, let me show you something. Now, this is my one and only reaction with Jack Pasebic. Ironically, the day after I have this interaction with him, he tells you that he's going to debunk Q. What do you have here, Uni? Well, I have Jack Pasebic following me, messaging me and saying, hey, everyone says I should reach out to you on the Q origins. Did I say anything to him? Hell no. I just dropped the data bombshell. What did he say? Thanks, mate. I said, I'm off the radio show now. If you need anything to know in open tweets, I told him just to make sure he sourced me. You can find it on my Twitter. So did I give Jack the last part of the debunk? Yeah. Did Jack source uni rock? No. Have I said anything up to now? No, because I'm about getting the information out to the public. I'm not for fame. I'm not for fortune. I'm not here to make myself look good. I'm not here to ride the big you know, numbers of uh, live viewers because I've had 5,000 concurrent viewers, 12,000 concurrent viewers on my live streams. I've had my live stream listed on the front page of YouTube more than once, more than twice. I had massive, massive um, live streams in the past. So, you know what? I'm okay with everything that happened. I'm not mad at Nathan. I'm happy. I want all of the scammers out there to let their scammer flag fly because i'm going to litter my playlist red pill to pay the bills with the log of what they're doing not just on this platform but on every platform out there and i just got accepted to several new platforms that are invite only platforms um just so you know and i'm going to be literally littering the truth about these people the evidence that is onto the internet until Red Pill to Pay the Bills will become the show that completely stops these scammers. People will know before they donate, before they buy into someone's claims on the internet. Let me go check Red Pill to Pay the Bills to see if there was one done on this person, just so that I can get the full picture. And that is going to happen. I am going to do this. And you are going to be exposed if you get put on the shows, bros. So another thing is I've been forgiving up to now. If you recall, Nathan's begged for my forgiveness several times in the past, and I've been nice enough to forgive him against my subscribers warnings. I have done that with several other people out there. Just so you know, any of the Q scammers I've been hitting lately, when it comes to April, not her, but April Lejeune, when it comes to the other people out there that are scamming like they are, uh, Sather, Beans, all these people, they will not get a reprieve or a f We will not forgive them. Dude, I thank God for you every day, bro. Johnny, thanks. Man. Same for you, man. Same for you, bro. We are a team, man. We are the uni rockers and the super trampers and the global agenda -ers, and all the channels out there that do this. We are a team of people that are here to represent facts. We're not here to make these people look bad. 
We are here to show you their own actions, and we're going to do it, April Lejeune. Gordon Sather, lift the veil. Titus the zombie Frost. Did you guys know that Titus Frost is a zombie? He's a zombie from Transylvania. Let me tell you what happened to him really quick, and then we'll get back to this video. Let me get the, the Titus is a zombie music playing really quick. Here we go. Busy. Busy. Tell Biscuit to play those drums because we're about to tell everyone about uh, Titus Frost. Yes, the zombie. Yes, from Transylvania right now. If you didn't know, YouTube is plagued by the undead. And no, I don't mean just really stupid YouTubers that are scamming you. I mean people like Titus Frost, who is a zombie. An actual, real zombie that dresses like a human being. Now, if you don't believe me, if you think this is a joke or something, you're dead wrong. Get it? That was a joke. Did you like that, Biscuit? I know, right? I can see Biscuit laughing. We just, Biscuit doesn't have a mic. Um, you can go type in Titus Frost and go, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Titus Frost Donut. Now, if you type Titus Frost Donut into YouTube, you click on the first video that comes up and oh. hear his excellent research, then you'll know that he is a zombie. Supposed uh, victim of Voodoo Donuts. Was Normal people don't talk like that. On the whole ice cream pedo thing. Uh, ice cream pedo thing. You'll notice he says thing a million times that he uses the word uh, a million times that he's like that he says the word like a million times these are zombie words zombies only get their intelligence their iq points from sucking the iq points from his viewership so when you watch titus frost videos he is continually sucking your iq out like a vampire but he's not he's not like up in the ranks enough to be a vampire. He Like when they promote you, zombie is like the most surface level, okay? And then after Titus, you've got April Lejeune, Random Rants of Ryan, Jamie Big Mac. They are ogres. They are undead ogres, okay? You know, like they grunt around and act all weird and tell you what's right and wrong and tell you what to think. Well, who does that but a zombie ogre? And then above the zombie ogre, you've got the vampire overlord of Transylvania. Let's go to Transylvania while I do this. The Vampire Overlord of Transylvania. Do you know who that is? Because you will be shocked when I tell you who the Vampire Overlord of Transylvania on YouTube is. And I'll tell you right now. Sing it, Busy. I didn't tell you to play the piano, Busy. Sing it. That's right. The zombie overlord of Transylvania is Jason Goodman himself. Now, when he was when he was putting out the, his YouTube channel, he just typed it wrong. Okay, he meant to put out crowdsource the tooth, but accidentally put an R in there, and it became truth. All right, it really does mean crowdsource the tooth because he can't smile. If you ever notice, Jason Goodman can't smile. You can't, he has incisors that are like vampire incisors, and that's why he won't show them to you. He is a vampire overlord. April Lejeune and the Big Macs and the Rants of Ryan of the world are the zombie ogres, you know, one step below them. And then at the base level, you've got zombie Tituses and zombie Satherses. You know, they just go around with the most surface level investigation and reasons to believe what they say until you are convinced of their stuff. Back 